Let's get ready to rumble. Here we go, episode 60 of the Hibs Ramble. It's myself, Liam, Mark and Sean. How are we doing, boys? Fantastic. Okay. Very good. well, mate. Thank you. Yep, and we've got a very, very special guest with us tonight. Um, we've been looking forward to this for a couple of weeks now. So we actually put out a tweet um, when we announced we were interviewing this particular player. Um, and some of the words used to describe him, and I quote, uh, caviar, strong, machine, outstanding, marauding, and then finally the best bit making men all around Easter Road self-conscious with these rolled-up shorts. <laughs> Lewis Miller, how you doing, mate? I'm bluffing. I'm bluffing. You've seen a few of those, mate. You made me smile, so uh, good to be on it. Good. Cheers good for man. coming on this. We're absolutely delighted to delighted to have you. Um, we'll just get right into it, right? Straight off the bat, like I said, we'll do so. I'll be a bit of quick fire. So, the first question for you is, who did you support growing up? I've always been a Liverpool supporter because my dad's sides from um from Liverpool. Obviously, they come down to Australia when they were when they were younger. But um, yeah, I've always been a Liverpool supporter. Like I said, when I early days as well, I was like I was into football, but I wasn't really like as as passionate as you'd say these hip supporters. So, <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad I'm where I'm at now. And um, yeah, Liverpool is definitely my team. Are you wanting the game for the sun, uh, Sunday replay? Or Saturday be uh, oh, if that's the problem with this season so far we're so up and down aren't we so uh, I don't know what's going to happen but fingers crossed Darwin Nunes scores a late winner like always our man <laughs> what, um, what's your first football in memory first football in memory I played for a small club in Australia Pitwood RSL I remember uh, I was. I think Dad took me when I was when I was all young. Obviously, I'd done trials and all that. I just fell in love with it because I had a few mates there playing in the same team as well. So, um, yeah, I kind of just fell in love with it after that. Just a good, good to get out the ball, and I wasn't too bad at it. I was a bit fat as a kid, though. I ain't gonna lie. So I struggled a little bit, but apart from that, I, I loved it. So you weren't a uh, marauder, has been described full back back oh, then. Oh no, 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 no. Not at all. Chubby face, circular face. <laughs> Struggle after five minutes. So. A bit like me, a bit like me <laughs> Um, Do you remember your first football kit? I'm assuming it's probably going to be a Liverpool one then. Yeah, it was a Liverpool one. It was um, it was a Gerrard one, I'm pretty sure. Gerrard midfield. The old, typical home kit. Oh, it's beautiful. I used to wear it everywhere. I wore it asleep a few times as well. That kid stunk, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> um, we've seen through your Instagram since you sort of know that we stalked your Instagram, Lewis. By the way, <laughs> Whoa. Um, um, but since obviously, since you've kind of moved over to Europe, you've been traveling a bit. Um, is there a destination that you want to get to that you've not been able to, to go to yet? Football wise or holidays? Either, well, holidays, we'll go holidays. Holidays. <laughs> Yeah, we've been pretty lucky. The difference with in Australia, it's, it's you can't travel anywhere because everything's so far away. So obviously, coming to Scotland, like Europe's just around the corner. I've been to, like I said, I've been to Italy, Positano, I went to Marbella. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what's on. I really want to go to the Maldives, to be honest. Stay in one of those cabins on the, on the water. Some mm. the photos oh, there look like a joke. The wee slide that goes into the yeah 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 spot on yeah yeah. What's What's the what is there is there any off the top of your head like would you or say or then football and life where would you like to go football and life? <sighs> Not in football here at the moment. Plus, it's always better when you're playing well. But like I said, I just want to reach uh, the top of the top, right? Every that's every footballer's dream to get as high as they possibly can. So. Like I said, I'm going to well, do you're already there, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the biggest club in Scotland, right? So hey, hey, like, hey. it's a very good, it's a very good start. It's a very good start. And I'm very, like I said, the resume and the, the hype around this club is insane. Like I knew about it before I come to it, um, before I come here, which is saying something because football is not very big in Australia. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I said, I just want to go as high as I possibly can. So fingers crossed. 
So we'll say Anfield, then that's probably your dream your dream destination to play at, play at Anfield. That would be a joke, listening to that anthem before a game. I'd get chills. Uh, it'd be unreal. What's, um, what's your favourite cheat meal? Am I allowed to say that? Or is it getting <laughs> done? Well, this, this is when you're, you're in your downtime. You can, like I said before, you can speak to your heart's content. You know what? When I first come here, probably shouldn't be saying it. When I first come here, um, during pre-season, I tried fountain desserts or something, cookie dough, some Kinder Bueno cookie dough. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and then if it's a savoury yeah. meal, I'm having a double quarter pounder. Ooh, that's that's solid. I'll tell you what, it's a good with, vanilla, well. with a vanilla thick shake. That's a probably shouldn't, be saying, probably shouldn't be I'm incriminating myself here, to be honest. <laughs> We're not going to grass on you, yeah. don't worry. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Uh, what's your favourite TV or movie? So TV series, movie to sit and chill and watch. It's a good one because I've watched a lot more since I've been here because it's usually rainy and very cold here. Um, <laughs> oh, it's a good one. That's a good one. I've, I've watched so many. Uh, my favourite one. I'm probably gonna have to say. Oh, I forgot the name of it already. Thomas Shelby. Who's that one? Oh, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. That's the one. Peaky Blinders. That's terrible for me, by the way. That is horrendous. Saying it's my favourite show, and I don't know the name of it. Good. <laughs> At least you remember the main character. That's the main character. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do you do in your spare time? So when you've finished training or whatever, what, how do you unwind? What's your What's your, What's your favourite thing to do to unwind? For, I'll just for feet up and watch his TV by the sounds of it when it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> that and golf. I'm getting into golf. It's a, it's it's just you guys live and breathe the sport over here, and I'm I'm quite shite at it, so I got to get better. A lot seen, better. Were you not were you not out with um, Harry McCurdy a few weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we've all, we all seen that part. We've all seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Harry's good to be fair. He's very good. I'm actually I'm gonna do a golf fitting with him tomorrow. Actually, funny you say that. So I think I'm gonna try to get a two iron, but. Don't know. I've got that in my locker, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So next is a bit of. So this might be a complete hit or miss because you might not have tasted or savoured some of the Scottish stuff on here. So we'll just we'll it's just run with it, right? So right. The first one. The first one is Tim Tams or a Tonics tea cake. A what? A Tonics <laughs> tea cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's basically it's a, it's, bis, it's like biscuit and marshmallow with a chocolate coating. So you've obviously oh, not had that sort of marshmallow. Thing. I'm gonna have to say no. Nah, not a marshmallow guy. Or, or will we change it to uh, Tim Tams or Kinder Bueno? Oh, Kinder Bueno. Kinder Bueno. Kinder Bueno. Kinder Bueno. Country mall. Country mall. Man's got taste. Man's got taste. I like Man. it. Yeah, hundred percent. The other couple came in from a um, Australia. I think it's Sydney High Bees. He's an Australian based. Hibs fan. Um, so chicken salt or salt and sauce? Chicken salt, hundred percent. Hot summer's Have day. You had salt and sauce before. You you talking about the brown sauce? Uh, that's the one thing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I tried that. But it was alright, but you can't beat classic chicken salt. We don't have brown sauce in Australia, so it was it was interesting to taste that one, but it was good. Um, a meat pie or a Greg's steak bake? See, this is where I'm going to get slaughtered. Never been to Greg's. And I know <laughs> I know the UK and Scotland kind of bigger on Greg's. So I'll, I'll leave that one on hold for now. I don't want to answer or hurt anyone's feelings, but I'll, I'll say that one's a draw. Right, okay. Uh, just a couple more. Lemon, lime and bitters or iron brew? It was always coming. Lemon lemon bit is for sure. Yeah, it doesn't sound very appetizing. That's the thing. It does. It, it, it sounds really posh. I, f- I feel quite bad saying it, but so you're not a fan of Iron Brew then? I, I'm, it's it's all right. It's <laughs> it's all right, but it's not lemon lime is pretty good. I used to have that a lot back home. And uh, the last one I've got for you. So this is a very specific one. Um, so I'm hoping you know what these are or where they're from. Uh, so it's Oliver's Pies at Kareel Bay or Upper Crust at Long Reef. Who wrote that question? Can uh, you see? I'd like, to, 
Uh, I'll need to I'll need to go back and check it out. So if you you give your reasons why you're going to say it, and I'll say exactly well, who said it. Well, it must be someone who knows you're going off well, that reaction. Yeah, it's someone that knows me very well because they were the two spots that I used to go to. I used to live in Avalon, which is Creel Bay. And that was the kind of the local pie shop that me and my mates always went to because it was right next to a football field as well. So we'd play football and then we'd go have a pie. And then the other one was if I travelled to my other mate who lived in, near Long Reef. But they have... Oh, what a question. Oh. Uh, it's, yeah, so that actually comes from uh, Sydney Highbees. So it's a, that... Hibs base, it's a Hibs base. It's a Hibs base. Sorry, a Hibs base. A yeah. Sydney-based Hibs fan. yeah, yeah. yeah. They look like they're from North Narrabeen. Yeah, North, yeah, North Narrabeen, yeah. Yeah, I live along that coast strip there. Wow. Um, I'm going to have to say all of his pies. Too many good memories there. What's the pies are a joke. <laughs> what, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the standout pie from, from all of us? Oh, I'd get the, the steak pie. Chunky steak. Thing is, we usually do a weekly pie review, right, of all the different <laughs> rounds. Do you actually? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of all the different grounds in the Premiership, uh, it's what we call it the Premiership. So we may need to nah. go. Uh, we may need to go international and try all of our pies. Oh please! You'd have the time of your life trying pies every <laughs> different country. That's my dream. That'd be unreal. That's the future of the Hibs Ramble. <laughs> I wish. I hope he gets there. I really do, and I will be joining. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Lewis, I, we're going to jump to your early on education a wee bit but before we get into it I need to make you aware that for this whole episode sheer dedication for you my shorts will be rolled <laughs> because nah, the nah, amount of questions and what your thighs are getting it makes me not or want to skip leg day no, your legs are big your legs are bigger than mine nah, I don't know about that you know they're 100% the bigger <laughs> than mine he's just got a real good camera if you don't make the next Australia squad we'll go do a leg day together and then we'll nah, see. please please Please, I need to sort them out. But for my sake, I obviously hope you make the squad. So yeah, if you don't, thanks. it's a win-win for me. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously um, alluded earlier on that you are, not that I was expecting you to say it, a bit on the heavier side when you were younger. But with mm. your your dad having like the Liverpool supporting aspect to your, your family and stuff like that, I want to just try and understand your football and education growing up. Because I've got, personally, I've got family in Australia and they were very... And I noticed when I was over there that they're huge on like multi sports. Growing up doing multi sports, you find yourself doing a. Athletics, running, and that's not even touching cricket or anything like that. And you said earlier on that football is not even anywhere near the top sport, and it's not. What or how did you find yourself not necessarily falling in love with football, but what did your. your football and background look like prior to playing and like the education how you picked up you know kind of the skills yeah, yeah. yeah so in Australia like I said like you just said there's a ton of sports and I think early on it's not really focused and you're not really assigned to a sport obviously so you're playing 10 different sports plus in the schools that have different sport programs where each month that bring a like a professional AFL player or cricket player or just someone in the general kind of area that uh, specialise in a particular sport and they kind of just you learn. I think it's just more core skills. Um, obviously, some kids fall in love with different sports, right? And after trying a lot of them, to be fair, <laughs> basketball, uh, rugby league, um, football, AFL, cricket. Um, yeah, the, and tennis were the kind of ones I tried out. Um, basketball was close to be fair. I'm not gonna lie. I've got a mean, I've got a mean jump shot. <laughs> but um, even with that weight you had when you were, oh, I tried. I really did. But that's what I'm saying. I couldn't run, so I just stand in one spot and then just shoot, let it loose. So, but yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, it wasn't. The more I got into it, the more I fell in love with it. So it, it really wasn't even close, to be honest. <laughs> So I know you had some some time, obviously, you mentioned earlier on being at Pitwater and then you had, when you were down at Manly um, and you were in Sydney, youth system as well. How did the move to, like, the academy at the Mariners come about? So, yeah, it was exactly, uh, yeah, it was, not a, it was not a great story. So when I went, so from Manly United, um, 
obviously I was doing really well in the academy there. And then I, Sydney FC, uh, A League run up uh, an academy for the first time ever, which was, I think, don't quote me on this, I think it was 2016. And so in that first year, I got selected for that academy. And then um, I played for a few months. I was playing right back as well, but at the time I was a centre back. Um, and then I, I done my uh, Salter Harris Salter Harris fracture in the knee, which is where you fracture your growth plate in your knee. And um, they were saying that worst case scenario, one leg could be bigger than the other. <laughs> so it was it was quite an intense injury, and I was out for months. And then um, at the end of the de- at the end of the year, they send uh, letters of, by email saying whether you've been retained or not. And before that injury, I was playing really well, so I kind of thought it was a no brainer that wouldn't let me go, especially as a kid who's just been injured, been out, he's been upset. But I got obviously I got hit heavy with that. So I was very upset, obviously being so young as well. And then from there, they kind of just it went worse to worse where after that I went back to my old club and they said, Oh yeah, you can you can train on if you want, but we don't have any spot for you at the moment. Which was a bit which was quite upsetting as well after because that was the club that I kind of grew up with as well. And then from there, I met uh, Joe Haywood. He was at North Shore Mariners, which was at the time the sisterhood club of Central Coast Mariners. And then I got a spot there and I was obviously 17, played for the under-20s there. And then I just started working through the ranks. And then obviously one of the Mariners coaches caught me and um, I started training with the A-League when I first rocked over there and then signed an academy contract, contract trained the academy and worked all my way up. And is that when you first made the move into kind of the academy from, um, is that where you kind of first met Monty? Because you obviously would have been aware of him being at the Mariners at that point and then him coming towards the end of his career. How How is the beginning of that relationship? So I've, I've kind of, I've always been a Mariners supporter in the A-League because my, my family actually live on the, my, you know, my dad's brother lives on the coast and the first proper game that I watched live was the Central Coast Mariners and we also watched the final as well Mariners Monty was in that team but obviously he was injured so he didn't play um, so I knew of Monty um, and then when, when I got to the coast he wasn't he wasn't the academy coach for the first uh, year year or two and then he came in later on and well, I think we just clicked and I, I liked his energy and I liked what he wanted to get out of me as a player and obviously, as being a player himself, he knows exactly how to deal with hot heads like myself. So, um, yeah, it, it was just a, it was just a good relationship, and he helped me out so much with my career, and is still doing it. Yeah, you'll not be glad to know that I'm a glory supporter because my uncle scored the first. Oh, really? Yeah, he scored the first. He'll, he'll kill me if I don't get it in. He <laughs> scored the first ever uh, pro goal for Glory when they really? first started in '98. So yeah, so he'd kill oh, me wow. if I don't mention it. Um, you mentioned obviously Monty there and him bringing the best out of you and you excelling. I remember I went back recently to watch it. I remember some heavy into the A League. You you done a preseason interview back in two thousand and one. You're not going to remember it, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. And you spoke about the benefits that Monty has brought to your style. And then in their preseason to uh, in two thousand and twenty one, you said that he's got the potential to make you one of the best players in the league. And you went on to make team of the season. At the end of the season, you had that huge, huge success that season. Yeah. What other than obviously Monty's influence, more about yourself and your style, what what clicked that season? Because there was loads of good players in that squad that have obviously moved on. Not so many good players moved to the other side of the city, obviously. The only the good players come to us. But um how how was that season as a whole? Because you were clearly very confident at the start. You backed mm-hmm. yourself. You knew Monty could back you to go on and do what you done. So, how how did you like? How did that click? And how did you know that that was going to click so early? So I had a very close group of um, boys from the coast. <clears throat> so I actually moved up there with, and we'd always play football together at the park. And I was the most competitive one there, and like I'd probably get into him. So I think. I kind of just had this competitive nature about myself and especially when I didn't play the year prior, I had that great season because I was contracted two years before I had that great season, Yeah. but I was not, but I was nowhere to be seen because obviously I had, uh, like I said, a bit of a, a younger, I 
chat back uh, chat back to the coaches, which they certainly didn't like, especially even someone so young. Um, which obviously I'm learning from that, and I'm obviously developing as a player. Um, and I, I kind of always knew that I had the ability to go above and beyond everyone else, but I just needed that opportunity and that belief from a manager. And especially when, I don't think you understand, when you're not playing for a year or two, it's it's the, it's the worst feeling ever. And you just feel like you're missing out on so much. So that year when I got my opportunity, I said, there's no way I'm going to let this slip. So I, I put in the work and luckily the rewards here I am at Hibs, so I couldn't couldn't complain. I'm glad you mentioned what like the lows, but then also talking about the highs. And I wish my technology was working because I had something I wanted to play <laughs> right in there and it's delayed. What it actually is is behind me, it's meant to be a screenshot of that back post header for your first goal for the Mariners. How against Brisbane? How yeah. could you yeah, against Brisbane, the two 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 nil game? How yeah. was that? How was that feeling? So yeah. <laughs> Oh, I had a celebrate. Like I always had a celebration I wanted to do when I scored my first goal. Um, I wanted to do a backflip, but all composure went out the window, and I literally just started running, throwing my hands up, doing this, going there. So everyone coming in, like you could just see that I was just I was over the moon. It was one of the one of the greatest, yeah, probably one of the greatest moments of my career. And I feel like that took me from being one of those uh, like a inexperienced young player to slowly work my up to an experienced developed a lead player starter so uh, i think that was a massive turning point for me it gave me extra belief so but yeah what a moment i i, I botched the header as well if you look at it i hit it like on my face and it went straight down and somehow went in so but hey Just goals a goal goals a goal Just goals to goal. up. Just to wrap it up for me, uh, um, before Mark comes on and talks about the early part of your Hibs career, obviously you spent some time, again, technology has let me down because I had another photo to put behind me of the celebration of that goal um, where Cummins comes and joins in. What, leading up to the move to Hibs, did you know, you mentioned earlier on you knew quite a bit about Hibs prior to joining. What did you know, how did you know, how did that come about? And if anything, what kind of influence or words did Jason say prior to the move? So there was a few Aussie boys, obviously, that have come to the SBL as well. So when that happened as well, I looked into the league and kind of just wanted an understanding where they were going. So I come across Hibs and they were, obviously there was the four kind of main teams, Celtic Rangers, Hibs, Hearts and, and Aberdeen. So I knew that they were the top tier European football clubs. Um, and obviously Jason had nothing but Great words to say about him. Said he loves his experience there. Plus, he was scoring loads of goals there. It was funny seeing a young Jason Cummings. I did look at some of his highlights. So, but yeah, I just kind of knew it was. I, I knew it was the right place to be. So there was a few options, but I, I just like I said, Hibbs. It just kind of spoke to me almost in a way. Sounds cringy as hell, but like I really, I really just thought that was the right move for me. We're seeing that come to fruition so far. Um, I'll pass over to Mark. He's obviously going to touch over your early Hibs career, but now nah, I appreciate Lewis, top man. Easy, man. Appreciate it. Cheers. Um, Lewis, it was announced that you were joining Hibs on the 9th of June and that you were going to join on the 1st of July last year. Obviously, it's not a normal transfer moving from Australia to Scotland. Yeah. It's the other side of the world. It's mm -hmm. so many things to consider, you know, a different culture, a different climate, everything like that. Talk to him about how difficult or how easy that move was, obviously, moving away from your family, you know, like I said, going through all those changes. How easy or difficult was it to to adapt and, and come over? Yeah, it was it was obviously it was very difficult. Like I said, it was I just it's kinda of like I left my whole life in Australia. Like it was complete like you said, completely different environment. Um but I felt like I needed change and I wanted change because I know that's what was needed for me to get to that next level. Um, I first of all, I prefer playing in the cold. I run longer. It's too hot in Australia to play, I swear. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, it, it was really tough at first. I think the first two months, it was kind of just a, a really massive adapting period, getting used to the boys, um, 
the coaching staff, the environment, the standard of football, which obviously is a is an increase. Um, but like I said, throughout time, and as you can see now with the boys, we're just we're just a close group, and I think that's the main thing. I needed time with the same bunch of boys, and and like I said, getting a fam familiarity with the club. So, yeah. Yeah, and was there anyone at the club or in Scotland you touched on, you know, you had a, a couple of boys that had made the move to Scotland. Was there anyone in particular, either at Hibs or just in Scotland in general, that helped you adapt to the move, that, that helped the change? Yeah, the, a big one was Ryan Portis. <laughs> so he was he was my mentor. So, um, no, when I first went to pre-season in my, uh, was it, I was in Portugal, um, I, I roomed with um, Porto, Nizzi and Ginto, <laughs> all three of them that aren't at Hibs anymore. But um, um, yeah, they were yeah, they made me feel feel really really welcome. Um, and I feel like they understood me. And when we after preseason was done, I was supposed to move into an apartment. Um, but it, it wasn't sorted out in time. So Porto let me stay at his for it was supposed to be two weeks, but ended up staying for like a month, a month and a week. So, um. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a gr great guy, and he helped me out a lot, especially because he was such a big influence at the club at the time. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful for that. Thanks, one. So it was quite a, a difficult start to the season um, last year. Obviously, it was an early exit from the the League Cup and the group stages, and it seemed like there was a few difficulties, not from from you performance wise, but just in terms of game time. Seemed like you know for the first first sort of few months you were quite limited in, in how long you were getting on the pitch. You were coming on quite late as a substitute. Was that part of your development plan? Did you have those conversations with the coaching staff, or were you left quite frustrated, feeling like you know you deserved your opportunity to come into the team? Obviously, it was still very early as well. You know, you're still adapting to your new country. You're still adapting to teammates. So, where was your head at in that period when minutes were quite limited? Yeah. So out of the cup, that was against. Was that Falco? Was it? If well, it, was I'm a, it was a group stage. It was a group stage. That was... Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I remember. Obviously, uh, I did quite well in preseason, so I was feeling confident. The manager was saying that I'm doing well. Um. So I was very confident going forward, going to Scotland and playing league and competitive football there. Um. I won't lie. My first, my first opportunity that I was given, I didn't take full advantage of it. Um. And then from there, like I said, the game time kind of lacked from there. And it's almost like I thought a trust, a little bit of trust was lost, which is purely on my behalf. But um, yeah, it, it, like I said, it was tough. I, I worked as hard as I could, but it's like I said, Cad was, Cad was playing out of his skin as well. Like he was doing really, really well. So that we had a really strong starting lineup. Um, obviously, it was really, really frustrating. But at the end of the day, it's, it, I want Hibs to win. I want us to win. Because it makes everyone look better at the club, the players. But I just went in with my head down, saying that uh, I need to do whatever I can to get involved and become a starter. Yeah, and then you made your your first start. I think, and we said before it was in March of this year. You made your first start mm -hmm. at Celtic Park. Celtic Park. Um, and obviously that's that's quite a big game to make your first mental. start. In. Mental. But, the thing about that game is, you know, although we, we didn't get three points, we got beat 3-1. It was a positive performance. We were 1-0 up at half time. We spent most of the game with 10 men. But I think what was on everyone's mind was just how well you performed that day. Um, you know, you came in, like I said, it was your first start and you were probably one of the best players in the park. But then all of a sudden after that, again, it seemed like you, you struggled to get back on. Again, I just want to understand how did that happen? You know, you've came on, you've proved yourself. Was that a conversation you had? You know, how frustrating was that for you? Yeah, it was obviously very, very frustrating. But first of all, that game was surreal. My first starting debut against at Celtic Park was it was insane. The away fans that we had there as well were phenomenal. Um, but like I said, when in games like that, like it's we're versing such a big club, a club that's won the league multiple times, and in my mind, all I want to do is beat the winner. If you beat the winner, you're the best. So that's when I feel like the best competitive drive comes out of me in bigger games. Um, 
in terms of why I don't think I played um, after that performance was the manager saw me more as a defensive player. And I think obviously playing Celtic, you change tactics and compared to whether you're playing other teams in the league. And I think he thought that defensively that I would be the best shout, um, which I thought I did, like you said, I thought I did quite well. Um, and then the, the next few games was, I say, I say lower ranked opponents, but at the end of the day, this league is very competitive and anyone in the day can win a, win a football match because there's just a lot of quality here. But I th- he wanted more of an attacking prowess, so I think it was an easy replacement for um, Cads to go in. So it was just a different style of football and yeah. what decisions and options he had. So, Well, incredibly, you made your second start also against Celtic this time yeah. um, at Easter Road. So it seems like maybe you were just made to play against Celtic. No, but, no. Um, this time it was very similar in terms of your personal performance, but a different outcome. Hibs obviously won the game 4-2. And you mentioned there that, you know, you you the best comes out of you in that sort of competitive aspect. How buzzing were you that, you know, in your first season and only your second start, you were played a, a really key role in beating, you know, the champions of the country? Yeah, unreal. Like I said, everyone looks at Celtic, sees them as the champs. And then when you got the boys that come out and give everyone got, gave 110%, you could tell we wanted to prove a point, set an example, especially at home around our fans like yeah there's no words to describe it it was just yeah it was just unreal I remember after the game just you just stand there and you just look around and you just go is this real so you start pinching yourself but um yeah like I love like I said I love playing those games a lot on the line look if you can be rewarded or you can be almost put in the spotlight if you, if you don't have a great game so, yeah. but that's that's just the uh, it's risk versus reward when you're in games like that. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know that that quickly led to a, a really sort of a really busy period at the end of the season, for which we actually done you know really well in the after the split. Obviously, that culminated that game at Tyne Castle, where if we won, you know we had the opportunity to to climb above them and finish above them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we didn't manage to do that. Finished one one. And at the end of the game, there was some handbags, you know, there was a, a bit of a brawl, yeah. you know, some unsavoury scenes. Yeah. I just want to understand, because we obviously got to see what happened on the pitch, which you can understand tensions boiling over. I'm just interested to find out what the mood was like in the changing room. Was it one of just utter disappointment or was there some positivity because of how well we had actually finished the season? And we did give ourselves the opportunity to climb up of hearts, which we actually maybe didn't expect a few months prior. What, what was the mood like in the room? Yeah, well, like you said, the the, the change room was was very good at that time. We we're lucky. We we're on a we we're on a good run at the end of the season. Um, but I think it's important and it's good for us to be disappointed because most of the boys were ex- extremely disappointed because obviously they were down a player as well early on. We dominated the ball. We had chances. We just couldn't find the back of the net. Um, and especially because it's against Hearts away, <laughs> like it's the occasion was set. Um, obviously, we go in with an expectation to win, and we really thought we could. Uh, yeah, I think we deserved it, but obviously Hearts did did well defensively. But yeah, it was just really unfair. There was a lot of disappointment after the game, but we we did at the end pat ourselves on the back from coming back from such a such a tough spell early on in the season. So. I think that brought the boys closer together and it was a stepping stone for the right path now. Brilliant. Cheers, Liz. I'm going to pass over to Liam now. He's going to go over this season. Yeah, so obviously, Lewis, you're now uh, one of the first names on the team sheet, um, you know, coming from the end of last season and you're you're getting a lot more game time this season. Just how chuffed are you with having that sort of constant involvement in the first team? Yeah, that, that's always what I wanted. That's at the end of the day, that's always what I wanted. My name's at the top because I'm number two, by the way. I, this. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, like I said, I want to be part of this big, this big club, and I want to see this club thrive and succeed. And if that means that I have to play my best football, and I'm more than happy to do that. I, I love, I love playing well, obviously, um, for because it obviously it helps me as a player and obviously the team 
and the more experience I'm getting now, I just feel like I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep thriving. So, like I said, I'm in a very good spot now. I'm with familiar coaching staff. So, yeah, it's just I'm on the, the right path. Yeah, definitely. And you got your first goal as well. I don't know if you're going to claim the one at Kelly. I'm claiming that 100%. I don't care what no one says. I'm I don't know. It. Like, it, it seemed like, it. like a wee bit of an own goal to me. It was like, it was inside of the post. It was... Uh, I'm claiming it. I, I, you saw me celebrating, all the boys come to me, so I feel like that's an indication. <laughs> it has to be me. So. Someone in the stand next to me actually had a bet for you to be the first goal scorer, and it was given as an own goal, and he was really? absolutely skewed. <laughs> he was skewed. Who, who bet on me to score there out of that mind? I don't know, but he, he should have bet on you to score the following week as well, because <laughs> oh, no. they go absolute goal machine. I mean, oh. that was a... Uh, I mean, two very different kinds of goals, but you, you, yeah. spoke about, you spoke about Joe Newell and his delivery for that goal. When he's yeah. when he's kind of like setting up to to whip that ball in, are you thinking this is this is mine here? I'm I'm going to score. I know if I make the run, I know he's going to find me. He's he's got a he's got a magic left foot, as you've seen in multiple games. Obviously, he's been taking the armband recently as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, he's he's a he's a great great leader even greater person as well. So, like I said, yeah, I just I just made that run and he picked me up on a dime. So, I will be taking all the credit though. I will be <laughs> did you panic the for the celebration for that one as well? Oh, I did. But to be fair, I, it, was, it was a bit slippery. So, I thought I timed the knee slide to perfection. <laughs> the knee slide is actually right. I think I seen a picture um, after the game. And it was, uh, it was like, oh, Lewis Miller's got some apologising to do. And you can see the yeah, legs. Yeah, the whole pitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well. uh, yeah, so I mean, it's it's been you know, a season of first for you this season so far. You know, as someone who's grown up watching European football, obviously seen a lot of Liverpool in the Champions League and playing in Europe and that. What was it like to make your debut in like continental competition in the Conference League? Yeah, it was obviously it was such a big competition. Plus, you're traveling to countries <laughs> all over Europe, so. Like I said, I love that kind of travel experience because you don't get to do it much in Australia. Well, you go to different states, but like the fact you get on a plane two hours away and you're versus Andorra away in the mountains, like it was just it was unreal. Obviously, we didn't get too fortunate on that first leg, but obviously we worked our way up and we did really well in that competition. Well, obviously the draw didn't help us much. Villa, really, obviously probably one of the top sides of the competition. Um, but I think it was a great experience for the boys. I really do. Um, and I thought that we learned from that first game. We did decent on the second leg, but obviously come with a loss. Yeah, but then, I mean, Luzerne at home was great. I think you, you got into yeah. a wee tussle at Luzerne at home and then you got into a wee tussle and Luzerne away as well. Uh, now, I, I heard Joe Newell talking on Down the Slope about people weren't giving them enough credit for how good they actually were. How what was it like to, to play against them? Like what was the the difference in quality like compared to what you play in the in the premiership? It's 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 hard to it's hard to explain, but the each and every player was very, very technical. And I think the main thing as well for me was just their off ball movement. It's where they just get in spaces where you, it just provides two or three options for each player on the ball. And their ball speed was, like I said, it was, it was, it was really quick. Um, obviously, I think we were a bit more defensive when we played Luzerne, but mm-hmm. we grafted out and we obviously got the wins. Um, but, yeah, like all credit to Luzerne, they were an unbelievable side. But I, like I, said, I think it come to desire at the end of the day. And I think we had the biggest hearts. And obviously, we play great football as well. And it's no disrespecting us because... Yeah. We've been playing. I was going to say we've we've been playing unbelievable football recently. Um, we've got the quality, we've got the players, and uh, like I said, on any day we can beat anyone. But did, yeah, yeah but did it give you? Experience. Sorry, did it give you any extra motivation after their manager's comments after the first leg? Yeah. I I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was he was crying quite a bit. Yeah, no, it was a lot of complaints and uh, about the way we played, but. Football is football. It's not all played the same. Not mm-hmm. every, not every, in every country. Like, so I think those comments were uh, the that those comments were shown in the change room, so which gave us a bit of extra fuel, extra fire. Yeah. Um, 
at the end of the day, football's about winning. Exactly. You, that's all it's about. So you win the game, you, you, you're better than your position. That's that's it at the end of the day. So get to up them. That's what I say. Get to up them. Go <laughs> on. Um, and then just quickly moving on to Villa before we talk about you know the league and that this season. Um, we could see as fans in the stand that there was a massive, massive gulf in quality when Villa mm-hmm. came to play at Easter Road. The standout for me was Luca Dina. Unfortunately, you were you were more <laughs> or less up against him all night. Uh, he was superb. But apart from him, what was who who impressed you in that team? Well, like I said, especially that first game, uh, we say Dina was on my which he was, but I think uh, the Hibs fans were like this as well. But McGinn's movement, obviously, he was the winger, but he was inverted, so. Mm-hmm. He attracted me to him quite a lot of the times, which left the channel quite open for Dino to get the ball. Um, obviously, he put in a lot of quality quality balls. Um, but yeah, they're just they're very disciplined and they they really pick their moments because there's at times where you watch the game where you think, oh, there's spacing behind you that can go, but they they make that extra pass and they keep working us, working us, and then when they find the exact exact right moment, they they pick their spot and they're lethal. Like I said, they, <laughs> I wonder what their conversion rate was because they were very, very clinical. And I think at the end of the day, when you're put in that environment and you've been adapted by a quality coach like Emery, like you're gonna get you're gonna get good results, aren't you? So, but obviously it was a bit of a shock to the system. We were we weren't expecting that, and oh, I th- we knew we were better than that. We hundred percent knew we were better than that. Um, what was the what was the team talk like from Lee Johnson before the game? So it was it was we're on a stage like we couldn't have asked for a better occasion, could we? We we haven't really got much to lose based on the club's pedigree, um, and this is your chance to make a name for yourself and go out and cause an upset. So obviously it didn't turn out that way, but like I said, it was, I think it was just a great experience. So. <laughs> Is learning the difference in quality, so yeah, and then just touch. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, sorry, I'm just going to ask Lewis. See, just because you've just mentioned there about at the start, you want to get to the very top, Mm -hmm. and you come up against a team like Aston Villa. For you, was that a real learning experience? If you want to get to the top, like that's the level that you need to try and try and get to. And is it giving you your own motivation? to see what you can develop within your own game to actually get to that level? A hundred percent. You look at each play individually. And I did after that game, after the after the two games, I'd um, watch the clips back and I'd watch plays like Matty Cash and people that were playing my positions. Um, and I think it's just, they know exactly what they're doing, each one of them. I think it's it's massively tactics as well. Like it's bread and butter to them. They know they know how each other move and work. It's almost it's almost like they're speaking through each other's minds. Like it's they're just always on the same wavelength. And obviously, physically, they're they're top notch, and you have to be at that level. Um, and a hundred percent, I can see myself being there. It's just a matter of working as hard as I possibly can, being really strict with myself and disciplined. So, but like I said, it was a really good, really good for me. Absolutely, and then just uh, talking about Villa Park, um, how good how good was it to play there? But more importantly, how good were the fans? Oh my goodness, that that is the that's the best the best crowd that I've been in, and the fact that our hip supporters made it feel like a home ground was insane. So not only the pitch the pitch was perfect, the stadium was obviously sublime. Um, yeah, like you said, the away fans. The way you said the away fans, it, it was a massive. It was a massive part. Like the amount of support we got from them, it really lifted us. And yeah, wow, well, that was also another great memory that I'm going to keep keep in my head. The away fans were, yeah, they were a joke. I couldn't, I couldn't thank the fans enough for coming and making that trip because it wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a quick trip, was it? So it was a lot of dedication for a lot of them to come out and. Like I said, we do it. We do it for for the fans at the end of the day. So, I'm very happy that they come. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's maybe a memory that you'll remember, but my dad certainly won't remember it. 
I couldn't move <laughs> down, but he was uh, he was absolutely blotto uh, uh. down there. And I remember I was I bought the game on Aston Villa pay per view, and I had to sh- like stream it from my phone onto the telly. And he kept phoning me and phoning me, and I kept missing the game. I was like, I'm going to miss a fucking goal. <laughs> I was fuming. Well, uh, uh, finally, finally, he got the message or his phone died or something. And uh, oh, really? I was able to watch the game in peace. Uh, the bars would have been filled with him supporters. I guarantee you that. That's for yeah. free. Uh. Lewis, just just quickly on that, you've obviously mentioned the support, and for me, I was obviously I was down there, and for me, I, regardless of the result, it was the best supported atmosphere that I've experienced there for something completely different for you being in that such a big stand and obviously you've alluded to the fact that we were pretty much treated like home fans considered like how loud we were do you as a player on the pitch get the opportunity to try and soak something like that in maybe when you're trying to take a throw in or when there's a foul or anything like that or does the game pretty much kind of pass you by and you're more just trying to take it in in regards to the occasion yeah, so obviously you stay quite, you try and stay as focused as possible. But like you said, there is moments when there's stop of play and you kind of, you, I don't want to soak it in too much because it will get me too excited and I'll I'll be like, I'll just be flustered. I'll be like, like but yeah, this, that was, that, I just remember, especially that second half because I was down that flank. So every throw in that I was putting in down that side, I couldn't hear myself think. But like I said, yeah, it was it was an unbelievable experience, and I would love to have that atmosphere that that again, like especially playing with such a top side. The our fans were the best by country. I think a few of the Aston Villa fans as well were saying that that's that's the best best fan base that they've ever seen come to Aston Villa. So credit to Hibs and its fans, like one of a kind. What a club! Just wait till we're at Hamden in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday will be if you score in front of the Roseburn on Saturday, that'll oh put my goodness. Up in the Villa Park in the comparison. These ones, huh? These ones. <laughs> my guy, my guy. Get no, that's, that's actually next one of my one of my questions, really. I know we spoke about it off air, but I was going to say what celebration you're gonna do when you score on Saturday. Back post I'm header or uh, own goal that you're gonna claim, it doesn't really matter as long as, it, <laughs> as, long as you bring I'll out the wild. I'll do I'll do that with a backflip. Yeah. I don't want to run a backflip. Absolutely, just don't snap your Achilles like Cass. Oh, imagine, imagine. <laughs> but um, just talking about Monty for a second, coming into Hibs, um, how how good was it for you as someone who's worked with him before, for him to you know you see that he's linked with the job? Are you then hoping that it's him that gets it, or are you thinking, oh, maybe maybe someone else would would be better? But from what he's did with you. Uh, at the Mariners, I was just wondering if maybe you were buzzing about it or what. Yeah, Monty and I have always been really, really close. Um, he was linked to quite a lot of jobs, from what I remember, um, before. And obviously, the Hibs job come up. And I've seen, obviously, a lot of articles saying that he was probably the front runner. So I wasn't really... I was I was kind of like, no, nah, this, this isn't going to happen. Like I, I didn't believe it because... Like I said, I've been with him since the academy, so I've known him for years and years. So it was almost like, yeah, no, nah, this is not happening. This is this is just I'm just living in La La Land. Like this, this isn't real. Um, but like I said, any any team will be lucky enough to have Monty. He obviously, I think the main thing is he's a great guy and he understands the change room and he knows how to get boys to work as hard as they can possibly can for him. And there's a there's a passion that he has, which you can see with goal celebrations and stuff <laughs> like that. So obviously he loves the game, and uh, the boys can see that he really cares about this club and his players and the results. So yeah, we're, we're very lucky to have him. So does it give you a little bit more, you know, self belief knowing that he knows what you're capable of and you know what he's capable of? Does it give you that sort of belief to you know subconsciously? have an extra 5-10% in your game? Of course. Like I said, he, he's given me a ton of opportunities. And all I want to do is write by him and the club. So knowing someone that has known me for so long and trusted my ability throughout my career, um, like I said, it's, it is it is that extra extra fire in the belly because all you want to do is prove him right, saying this yeah. is why I deserve the opportunity. 
So. And uh, so just looking ahead to Saturday, not, uh, just a quick one on Saturday. <laughs> we're, all, we're all buzzing for it. Um, how much are you looking forward to it? Yeah, there are, there's no there's no better game than the Derby. Is there? A lot on the line. Um, bragging rights for sure. A lot of crap talk on the field. So it's it's my game to a tee. So, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm very, very, very excited. Like I said, this is a very big game, big occasion. Obviously, I played in, I think I've only played one game against Hearts, which is the last game of the season last year, where I come off at half time. Um, but yeah, I'm keen to get there and get revenge from that 1 1. Yeah, well, we'll hopefully make a make a few Tyne Castle memories on Saturday. Anyway, I've only seen us win there once, so really, no pressure. I've been, <laughs> I've been loads and loads of times. I've only seen us win there once. I've always managed to miss the games where we've really. Won. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's a good uh, thing or a bad thing that I'm going. I uh, might be the bad luck charm, but I'll okay. keep that in my head. I'll try and keep that in my head. Get the <laughs> okay. win on the wing. Then. If you see me, I, if you see me in the stand and we're two 0 down, just tell me to fuck off. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll win. But uh, yeah, so we've got Tyne Castle on Saturday, and then we've got yeah. Hamden as well. It'll be your first trip to Hamden, playing for Hibs. That must be like something that you're also really looking forward to. Yeah, of course. A semi final is a semi final. A final at the end of the day is why we play football. The biggest games, biggest occasions. I've never played a Hamden either. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, I, I don't even know what the stadium looks like. To be honest. <laughs> Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a shock, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try and soak it all in, and then give that extra burst, which I think that atmosphere will definitely will definitely bring. Um, but like, I'm, like I said, I'm so proud of the boys for us getting to the semi final. I think we deserve it after the few few weeks that we've had as a club. Like obviously, there's a lot that's been going on for the club, whether that's being managerial or stuff like managerial is kind of the main thing. So we're, we're kind of a bit flustered. We're saying kind of who's in charge, a bit of uncertainty. Um, but we got it together and we're starting to fly. So Absolutely. And it's a massive chance for us to pick up silver where, you know, with Celtic being knocked out mm. and Rangers are playing a diddy team in, the, in their semi-final. So, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of all geared up for, for us to win it. And we're to be fair, we're due uh, as well. We've not had a cup in a few years. I, I know, I'm well aware. From what I've heard, we are due a trophy. And I think, like I said, we're going to do whatever we can to bring that trophy to this club and to the fans. So. Absolutely. Well, I love to hear that. I, I really yeah. do. Love to hear that. <laughs> 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 and then just finally from me, before we uh, jump on to listener questions, it was well documented on Twitter today that you could be set for your first Socceroos call-up. Um, I think that that is because you were coming on the Hibs Ramble today. So we will... Of course, as a four, take full credit. Um, and well, you can just send your, your debut shirt to us and we'll yeah. I'll put it on my wall up here. I, I mean, but I believe you. I believe I'll do it <laughs> for sure. But, um, so that's obviously an ambition of yours. Just uh, the question that I had down was what what are you doing to work towards getting that soccer who's debut? Yeah, like I said, not, nothing has been said at the moment, so it's 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 getting announced. I think in the next day or so. Um, I, I've just got to, like I said, I got to keep playing the way I'm playing, and hopefully, what I've done in the past few weeks is enough for me to get selected. Um, obviously, I can always get better and learn, and I think that if I did get selected, that to be in that environment would only increase my ability. With such a obviously great country, a little bit biased there, but my favorite country. Um. So yeah, obviously fingers crossed, and yeah, that that'd just be a childhood dream of mine if I somehow got to play for my country, wouldn't it? It's every yeah. every every footballer's dream. Yeah, yeah it'd be, be some un- contingent from the from the Scottish Premiership and the <laughs> and that soccer is team anyway. Oh my goodness, I know, I know. There's a lot of in the previous camps been a lot of Scotland boys, aren't there? Yeah, three from Hearts, St. Mirren, Boiler. So fingers crossed, I can be the next one. Quite right. So we will just move on to listener questions here just quickly to wrap us up. Now it's time to answer the Hibs Ramble listener questions. Um, and this is a question that we get every single week that we do a podcast from John McIntosh. And he's asking, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? <laughs> oh, no, this is going to make me sound terrible. 
Well, you can't be any worse than Ben Kensel. He, when we interviewed him and Lee Johnson, uh, he said that he had shreddies for his dinner, and Lee Johnson said he had grapes. Wow. Yeah. All right, maybe you can't be worse than that. Oh, I'll take that back. I'll take it back. Uh, I, I got a Nando's tonight. I'm not going to lie. I, oh, yes. I was all out. I got a Nando's. Uh, oh, I man, talk I, us through it. Talk us through it. I get the Fino Pitta. Oh, that's the, be- the best thing on the Nando's menu for sure. And I get two sides of mash and broccoli. No chips because I'm in season, unfortunately. But <laughs> well, if Montgomery's watching, it was definitely broccoli. <laughs> cut the <laughs> cut the tape. Cut the tape. Um, next up, it's a it's a question. So after the St. Mirren game, um, there was a video of the players walking back down the tunnel, and you were shouting, "Get the fucking music on." <laughs> What tune did you put on when you got back into the gym? <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't even remember. I just remember at that time, I just wanted some loud, upbeat music that would just get me going because that was obviously a great performance from the lads. It was a very topsy-turvy game where there was up, down, up. So, like, at the end of the day, we, we just gave – we were just too much for them. And, I was yeah, the, the emotions were through me at the end of the games when you're tidy and then you get you hear that final whistle and you won, you get that just that extra spark, extra excitement, especially because we're going into a semi final now at Hamden. Such a big occasion. And yeah, I was my mouth spoke before I could think. So <laughs> Well it was yeah, funny but, anyway. I thought it was no, funny. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable, yeah. <laughs> what um, tune would totally- you put on though if you could if you could go back to that moment right now and you could pick one tune to put on, what would it be? Probably someone from Fisher. He's an Australian DJ. I'm not sure if you know him. I know that it's like, I'm losing it. Yeah, exactly. I'm losing it. Up there. Uh, I'm biased, like I said, to my fellow Australian. But yeah, I love, I love that kind of music, especially after a game, especially when you get a win. So. Uh, and just a final question from me before... I pass on to Sean for some other questions. And this comes from uh, McCann MC. And he says, you've had a few minor spats with opposition players. Do you find Scottish football physically tough or tougher than what you thought before you moved here? I've always been a, a, an aggressive player. And at times, I think I unleash my anger a bit, maybe too much. But like I said, I, I can't contain myself in those moments. It's just a overload of passion and aggression so but physically I, I, like I said um, it's a little bit it's it's a bit different um, the standard and the intense intensity and in gym work like even what we do at Hibs now is is different to where I've come from but I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's overwhelming I think I'm I'm adapting to it quite well and I think I'm quite dominant as well so like I said I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing stay on top of everyone so Top man. Cheers. Beautiful. Easy, man. Just to bring us into um, Craig's section, Lewis, you're doing teammates. My question kind of circles around that. Um, one of the questions that we got, you're ready to chuck a few boys I'm on. So, I, can I'm so I can tell. Well, I'm going to give you the chance to big a few of them up. So, Rudy came in with a question and asked, um, what would be your current Hibs five-a-side team? But I want to throw a little curveball in there. And I want to also ask you what your top five, like your five aside Mariners team would have been as well. And then Ooh, if they that. faced the current Hibs five aside that you're going to pick, <laughs> who would win? And you can't that's, put, you can put your set, totally, yourself up on either side. That's that's outrageous. That is an outrageous question. Um, all right, I'll pick, I'll pick the Mariners team first. I'll go with, obviously there has to be a keeper. Yes, keep yeah, yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, I'll go with mm, Mark Brugitti. He was a keeper when I was there. He got he was should have got keeper of the season while he was there. Um, in defence, I'll probably go with my boy Dan Hall. Um, other centre back. Do I have to have played with them, or couldn't it be from last? Because they did win the season last season. You've got, you've got to have played with them. At the I Oh. Not having any any of these cop out answers. No. Uh Ruben Tognik, part uh former soccer room as well. 
And then in two midfielders, and I'd probably go Josh Nisbet, the little magician. He's about five foot four. Um, how many is that? Four. So I got one more, and then I'll go with uh, a local or another one of my brothers. So uh, I, I, had a, I had a feeling he was going to be in there. Uh, it was, yeah, I'm close with yeah, he's, he's my brother, so he's been killing it. So hopefully he has a good season this season. And then Hibbs, goal, David Marsh. Can't pick myself. All right. Um I'm going Paul Hanlon. As my rock at the back. Joe Newell. We've got some good plays, you know. We've got some good plays. Oh, damn. I feel like this is just an insult, whoever I don't pick. Um, well, at the gonna... moment, well, at the moment, it's a good-looking hip side. So, you know, <laughs> you to continue to good, good-looking players. Um, the other midfielder I'm going to go with, I think I might go with Dylan Levitt. The other midfielder and then striker boiler. And who's I winning mean, out of that? You go on, put your name I mean, in. Oh, you've got Marsh, you've got International, you've got Boiler International, you've got uh, Dill's playing International. You've, uh, I'm gonna have to say Ibs, aren't I? I'm gonna have to say Ibs. You said that, and there was no uh, pressure. Yeah, yeah, radio, radio. Uh, he, that that team, I think that team was good. They're, like I said, we get a lot, a lot of quality, and uh, very professional. The professionals as well, so uh, I think that's a good fight. Well, as soon as you've bigged your teammates up, here's your chance to. <laughs> I think probably what you've been looking forward to for the last almost hour is to throw them under yeah, the bus. Um, but it. just just a couple on you first. Oh, no. when you it. when you signed for Hibs, did you do an initiation song? And if you did, what was it? I did. It was at a karaoke bar, though. Oh, this song. I think it was Land Down Under. Yeah, so it was just a just this bog standard Australian. I it was it was a safe. It was a very safe pick because I was I didn't really know the boys like that, so I was quite nervous. So I just wanted to play it safe. Well, that's ironic because that's the the tune that we put out when we announced that we were doing an interview with yeah. you. We got a wee video package, and that was the song. Yeah, so. it's a, yeah. But it, yeah. so to to follow up on that, in your time at Hibs, who's had the worst initiation? Ooh, worst initiation. Oh. Yeah. It seems like some of the boys, some of the boys signed in the summer look like they've got maybe like a bit of a bit of character about them. Like I can't imagine. Like, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That they, they all, yeah, they all gave it a go. They all, there's still a few. Believe it or not, there's still a few that haven't sung yet, which is the most outrageous thing on this planet. But from what I recall, I'd probably say Jordan, George Obeda, Jordan Obeda. What was what did he what did he absolutely massacre? That, that was the thing. I didn't know the song. No one knew the song, and he there was no rhythm. There was no. And I needed more, and I didn't get it from him. Are you going to throw the players who haven't sung under the bus? No, no, no. I can't do that. That's they're, criminal. They're, they're waiting until we get That's to the criminal. final sing some train of life to sing it. That's their yeah, exactly. I respect it exactly. I think that's their plan anyway. Um, I know you said that when you first joined it. Sort of Ryan Porteous and Kevin Isbitt, Kyle McGinnis were big influences on you. Obviously, they're now no longer here. Um, so out of the current squad, who's your who's your best mate? Who's your who's your go to out of everyone in the changing room? We're all just a close. We're obviously we're we're all real close with another. I wouldn't say I have a best mate, but I think they they're all my best mates. To be honest, we we got such a good vibe going on in this change room, but. I think I'm. I'd have to go with my fellow Aussie, Martin Boyle, the fake, the fake Aussie, Martin Boyle. <laughs> just, just Aussie fake Aussie Aussie manager. On that. <laughs> I've got a question, Lewis. Who yeah. is a better change room to share with, Cummins or Boyle? 
That's, that's, that's some experience, question. by the way. That, that is, is a great experience. question. That is a fantastic question. Wow. You know what it is? They're actually very similar, believe it or not. They're very, very similar. They bring life to the room. So Imagine imagine the boys that have had a change room in both of them at the same time. Oh, my and God. Oh, I could not imagine being in that change room. Just, generally... just be Lewis Stevenson having to put up with those two, man. Oh, <laughs> my God. He's done it for years, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yeah, they're both they're both great characters. I love, I love them both. So, uh, right, who alongside yourself? Because you've you're a bit of a self confessed nutter, as you've said. <laughs> um, if you were if you were going into a scrap, who's the who's the biggest hard man in the team that you take with you? Can it be in the coaching staff? Because if so, I'm picking Darren McGregor. Oh the yes, big <laughs> guy. Oh, guy you've seen the size of that bloke. Like, oh my god. But if, 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 if it had to be um a current player, probably just go for size strength here, wouldn't you? I pro- I'd love to have Rocky on my side. But yeah, yeah, he's a scary bloke. He's very friendly. He, he honestly, honestly, the nice one of the nicest guys I've met. But if you don't know him and you're on his wrong side, poof. <laughs> Jago seems like he could probably handle himself as well. Like. <laughs> J- J- Jimmy would would give it 110. percent That's what I know. He'd, he'd start swing. He'd swing about 50 times in the space of 30 seconds. That's what he would be doing. <laughs> Love that. Man. On the um, on the flip side of that, so if you're running in towards a scrap, who's running away from the scrap and <laughs> hiding in the changing room? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I said, yeah, this is where I can put someone in the spotlight. Oh, who's running away? Oh, who's a softy? Oh, I've made him worse now, whatever I say now. Uh, <laughs> you can't even say Boiler because he got involved in the scrap against No, I, the I, I, can't, I can't say Boiler. Boiler would give it a right go. I know I know Boiler. He'd give it a right go. Um, I'm going to say Riley, Harbottle. Wow, that's going to be a talking point tomorrow. Our bottle. <laughs> talking point tomorrow. Bailey, no bottle, more like, rather than hot bottle. I feel like Dylan oh, Venti no. looks like he wouldn't give it much of a go. Dylan Venti looks like he's a bit of a soft name. I could yeah, be wrong. No, you see, I, I'm kind of thinking, I'm thinking the other way around. I think he's he's he got some it. vibe. Like, he's real quiet, and then all of a sudden, if you get on his bad side, he comes out with, with a haymaker. <laughs> Who's the um? Who's the who's the best dressed? And the, other than yourself, obviously, who's the who's the best dressed uh, in the squad? Best dressed. I I don't think anyone's going to care what I say here because a lot of boys think I'm the worst dressed in the change room. But I think I'm going to go with I think Josh Campbell. Josh Campbell. He's got some. He's got some good fashion sense. I've I've asked him multiple times what he's wearing and where he's got it from. So I'm going to say Josh. We love Josh. So, well, we'll flip that then. On the so, you've already nominated yourself as the worst dress. So yeah. other than yourself, who's the worst dressed in this squad? <laughs> it's actually Harry, Josh. If, Harry, if Lewis Harry, is asking Josh for tips, and it must be Josh. Harry McCurdy, hundred percent. Hundred percent. I'm stinking. No, but the thing is, the, Harry. He's got. He's the most confident guy I've ever met. Like he's the most comfortable guy on his own skin. So like. In a way, he pulls it off, but from an outside of you, you go, "What are you wearing?" <laughs> what's the um? What's the most like outlandish gear that that Harry's wore to to train in one morning? Like, is there anything in particular that sticks out that you've even you've double taked him with? I can I on. can talk about his outfit today. He he had a Dennis Rodman denim jeans. <laughs> um, oh, what do you, what shoes do you have on? I uh, don't remember the shoes, but then he has, I'm not sure if he wore this, no, I didn't wear this today, but he has this lime green and pink jacket that he got from, oh, I forget where he got it from, but it's so baggy and it's got like ropes that come down the sleeves and everything. And I just remember, going, what is going on here? <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely Eric McGurdy, ain't it? <laughs> who's the um, Who's the best trainer? So you know that during the week, every day at training, that's 
a hundred and ten percent, nothing, nothing else. Probably a few candidates here, to be honest. When I first come to the club, I, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Paul Hanlon and. Jake Doyle Hayes when he was fit. They're kind of the two that kind of, they were just, I feel like they didn't do anything wrong during a session. So I think they always, they always killed it. So they're my two. I've given you two for the price of one there. So you're lucky. <laughs> who's who's the worst in the Who's at the back of every running drill? Oh. Who's shanking every, so if you're doing oh, finishing, no. who's shanking everything over the bar, missing passes, horrendous first touch, anything. Who's Who's the worst? Why have you said all that? You've made it ten times worse now. To <laughs> He's going to get battered when he goes in the one. Oh no! This time he'll have Daz on his back. He'll be all right. I feel like no, I shouldn't be. Exactly. I just, yeah, that's a good point. I feel like I feel like I should just say a name, and not think about it. Because the more I think about it, the more they go. You actually looked into it. Um, <laughs> oh no, I can't. I, I don't think I can. Can I? I can. I can. You also got a name in mind. I, I don't. I have so many names. I'm just trying to. The, who can I say who's not going to hurt me? That's that's kind of that <laughs> right now. Jimmy Jagle, clearly, or Riley Harbaugh. Actually, that's what Jimmy tri- tripped over today. Kicked his own leg. I'm saying Jimmy Jagle. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shouldn't have said that either, but hey, who's the um, who's the biggest teacher's pet? So who's the, always closing up to the manager and. Sitting in his office with a cup of Jimmy Jago. Jimmy Jago. <laughs> I thought that would be you, Lewis, given how close you are with Monty. Well, I thought we couldn't say my name, so I'm going <laughs> to go with that. I'm going to go with Jimmy Jago. Who's you the, ask um, anyone who's else the, to say me. Who's the biggest rebel? So, like you said about yourself, like you like to chat back and maybe not listen or take instructions. Is there anybody in the team that's maybe a bit a bit moody. We'll see. We'll see who's the who's the moodiest. Who's the happiest moody. that's been moodiest. Hmm. Might have to go with Harry McCurdy again. You know. There's a, to be fair, a lot of the boys have an attitude. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but I think I'll I'll go with I'll go with Harry. I'll go with Harry. All right, and a final question from us, Lewis. Obviously, um, Monty's came in and he's, you know, a massive proponent of bringing youth through. Obviously, gave you your chance at Mariners. He's given um, Rory Whitaker a game a couple of weeks ago, became the, you know, the youngest player in Hibs history. And we've seen the 18 squad last season, obviously, the journey they went on in the UEFA Youth League. And from, so I'll, I'll say from the ones that haven't, the, the Hibs fans in the first team haven't seen yet. Who who would be your tip to be the next one to, to break through? It's a great question. Um, well, I've been here for two years, so I've kind of seen two different kind of groups of academy. But yeah. I'm not sure if I'm shooting myself in the foot here, but I thought the best one was that I seen in the academy was Kanaya. Who's also a right back, so I gotta I gotta watch gotta watch out there. Obviously, he was, he's on loan at the moment, but I thought he was world class. Um, at such you're a young age, you're gonna have to make a fan club of right backs because yeah. you're, you're now in there, and right. we've already got Megla's fan club set up. So we'll get oh, on really? to oh, well. there. You go. There you go. But Rory, is well, we actually there. done. Oh, no, sorry. We actually done an interview with um, Ethan Laidlaw and Joshua Connor last season, and they, when we asked them who, uh, other than themselves, who did they think would be the next one to break through, they also said, um, Canal. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he, he's he's a very quiet, humble guy, and he just puts his head down and works. So I think a lot of the boys respect that as well. But like you said, Rory as well. Like you said, Monty doesn't give opportunities for the sake of giving opportunities. If you have to deserve it, you have to earn it, and he he done real well in the past few weeks and oh, lucky enough he got his chance and he was the youngest Tibbs player to start so fair play to him and fair play to Monty who just encourages the academy even more to come up so 
yeah, I think we're on a very good track at this club. That's brilliant, Lewis. Thanks. Honestly, thanks for your time. One last one before you go, right? What's your, so we always ask on the pod, uh, what's the score prediction for Saturday? So, going to you need to put your neck on the line. What's your score <laughs> prediction for Saturday? Gee, you never answer the question. I'll, I, you never answer the question, please. I got slaughtered last time in an interview where I said we we're going to beat him. So, this will be interesting. Um, I'm going to go with, Oh, do I go a bog standard score and say two nil? Would take that, think, mate. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll take two nil. Lewis, I can almost guarantee that that's going to be some kind of headline tomorrow morning. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. It's fine, Lewis, because on Monday when we recorded, I said I was the com- most confident we've ever been, and we're going to win by two goals. So I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> well, like I said, if you don't believe in yourself, then you got no chance, right? So exactly. As long as I that. see a Lewis Miller YLT celebration, I'll be chuffed, regardless oh, of score. If, if you see Miller on the score sheet, you'll be saying a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis, listen, you've been incredible, mate. Thanks so much for giving up your time tonight. Um, and obviously, with a big game on Saturday, we wish you all the best for that. Wish you all the best with, fingers crossed, an upcoming full international call-up for Australia and then for the rest of the season as well. And hopefully we can maybe get you back on later on in the season if we've had a a trophy one or two get you yeah. on that would be lovely I'll be the first I'll be the first caller <laughs> brilliant thanks mate and thanks also to Gav Vitu for putting this together for us um, it's really appreciated thanks everybody for listening and hopefully it'll be a cool podcast recording on Monday night come on <laughs> come on <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much appreciate it man cheers, cheers mate cheers yeah, man Let's get ready to rumble.